Uh, thanks for everyone uh, being here tonight. It's the regular session of the Board of Public Works for August 17th, 2021. Um, uh, starting here at 5.30 p.m. Uh, via Zoom. Um, packet and uh, agendas are posted online um, the, on the city's website and um, the agenda uh, has three sections tonight. We've got um, uh, messages from board members, actually five sections, but uh, messages from board members, petitions and remonstrances. Um, we've got a new section on special events, and then we've got our consent agenda and new business. So uh, I'll turn it over here now. We don't have anyone left in the waiting room. Um, turn it over to Dana Henke, the president for the Board of Public Works on uh, August 17th here at 530. Thanks, Adam. So I will call the meeting to order. Uh, first up, we have messages from the board members. Are there any messages from the board tonight? Only for everyone to be careful. It's a time of move in and a lot of people don't know the town or know how to drive around here. So everybody be careful and uh, understand it'll go on for a little while. Thanks, Beth. Okay, next up we have petitions and remonstrances. This is the section of the agenda where um, you, anyone from the public can speak on something that's not on the agenda. So is there anyone here to speak about something that is not on the agenda tonight? If so, please use the chat feature or you could raise your hand. Excellent. Yep, again, Adam Wason here. So yeah, if you could, if you have any public comment that is for items that aren't on tonight's agenda, um, we would entertain those right now using the raise hand function or the chat function. Uh, I see Greg Alexander's here uh, to offer comment. I'll unmute Greg. Greg, go ahead. Awesome, uh, thanks. Um, my name is Greg Alexander. I just wanted to give you all a little update on um, a project that's now pretty much done. Uh, it's called the Bentley. It's at 11th and College. It used to be, um, Delilah's used to be right there. Uh, you guys approved a, a, a maintenance traffic plan on January 19th of this year for it that called for um, some walk-arounds, some lane closures, and some sidewalk closures. And um, before you guys even approved the maintenance of traffic plan, they'd already been putting staging equipment and material on the sidewalk, blocking the sidewalk. Um, and I, I told you then that if there's no enforcement, then there's no walk around. And that has, that has turned out to be true. Um, at that meeting on the 19th, uh, Tom Ritten, men with, with Gillette, said um, that the walk around would be in place in a couple days. Um, and that, that didn't happen. Um, the MOT said the walk around wouldn't be in place until um, March. And I think that's roughly the schedule that, that happened. Um, I went back on January 25th and the sidewalk was, was blocked again with equipment. On February 2nd, the sidewalk was blocked. February 8th, um, the sidewalk was blocked. People were working, workmen were in the sidewalk with tools doing work. Um, and I, I saw um, at, on the, the March 9th, I saw a pedestrian using the sidewalk that was, was blocked. And so he was clambering, he was literally clambering over a power pile of gravel they'd left in the grassy median because the sidewalk was blocked and he fell. You know, like um, on March 1st, they had a, a gravel spitter operating across the sidewalk. So, you know, I actually saw a pedestrian start to walk under that while it was in operation. And that was honestly pretty terrifying. Um, you know, and I just go there when it fits my schedule. So I didn't, I didn't hardly go there during the summer. You know, it just, it's between me and downtown though, depending on the route that I take, but I've been taking it a lot lately because of the, the road closure on Rogers for the bridge at Rogers and 11th roughly. Um, so on July 24th, they blocked the walk around on 11th street that they were supposed to establish um, from June all the way to August 10th. So on July 24th, I was there and they had blocked the walk around. They had moved their fence out and parked a, um, like a sky lift. And so it was blocking the walk around, completely blocked. Um, on August 4th, they blocked the walk around uh, still. They had completely removed the fence and the sky lift was still parked in the walk around. On August 7th, um, it's the exact same, a blocked walk around uh, and there's a crane um, and no fence. The fence never came back. And then on the 10th, I was there and there was a little bit of fence still there. It wasn't erected, but they had taken that fence and thrown it. So now the fence is blocking the walk around. Um, and the, there were workmen in the walk around on August 10th. And you know, these are just the times I went, just to be clear. 
Um, I assumed that when I wasn't there, it was just as bad. On August 12th, they completely removed the walk around, um, which I guess is what their plan was, but work was still occurring on the sidewalk. They had ladders, saw horses, heavy equipment set up on the sidewalk, men using heavy equipment with pedestrians walking right beside them. On the August 13th, uh, again, no walk around, work's occurring in the sidewalk, cranes are across the sidewalk with lifting heavy objects over pedestrians. On the 14th, they're working on the sidewalk, lift on the sidewalk, ban on the sidewalk. On August 17th, there's a ladder on the sidewalk and a lift across the sidewalk. That was today. That was, I was just there for lunch. You know, I'm just going downtown for lunch. Like I'm not looking for trouble. I am literally just leaving my house, taking the obvious route to get lunch. And so it's pretty apparent that for the past three weeks, there has been absolutely no walk around. Um, and I understand it's really hard to run a construction site but that's why we had the MOT plan. That's why Tom Rittman had to come before you guys and promise that this wasn't gonna happen. But this happened just like I told you it would happen. And it happens every single time you approve a walk around. The contractor disrespects it and then staff is unable to enforce it. And I don't, I don't wanna like point fingers at staff. Like people, you know, it's, it's a hard job, but I demand, and I hope you'll demand too, a little bit of honesty and transparency about that. that when people come here and have a plan, they should say this plan isn't going to happen. So you can decide accordingly. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Quick question, and this is actually for you, Greg, uh, Mr. Mr. Alexander. Sorry. Um, when you notice these, um, when you notice these things happening, do you call in to the department and notify them? Yeah, I file U reports when I can. I filed, um, I think, a total of four U reports for this site, the most recent one on August 4th. And um, staff generally doesn't even close them, doesn't acknowledge them. I don't honestly know what, what happens to that, so I simply can't tell you. Okay, thank you. Greg, uh, well, and Dana, uh, President Hankey, uh, uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Greg, for your comments. I, I appreciate you pointing out the specifics of what you are observing. Um, you know, I, 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 no excusing blocking the walk around, no excuses there whatsoever. Um, you know, I, I noticed uh, in the last couple of days, just in my general work of the last few days with it being such a busy time downtown and um, with moving and everything, um, multiple times where I, I just stopped and reminded them, hey, you can't, we can't have lifts across the street or across the sidewalk. Um, you know, at this point in time, when it comes to August 15th, a lot of folks are just going to say, Hey, we're just trying to wrap up a project. It's no excuse. Um, I know Paul, I think, visited the site yet the, the other day as well. Uh, Greg, we do see your U reports. We do respond with phone calls when we see them. Um, and Greg's right, and I appreciate Greg's acknowledgement that, you know, staff, not pointing the finger at, at the staff inspector levels, you know, this is a issue where they can't monitor 24 seven. Um, you know, there's active sites all, all around the city right now. So I appreciate that, Greg, I, I, I truly do. Um, and I and we do see so your you reports, we do respond to those um, with the contractors. Um, I thought we were doing a really good, a better job closing them out. So I'm gonna make sure we follow up there as well. So, um, but thank you. Um, and I don't see anything else for public comment right now. Um, Greg's the only one that had a hand raised. I don't see anything in the chat function for any public comment and on anything that's not on the agenda this evening. So I would turn it back to you, Dana. Okay, thank you. Okay, next up is special events. First under that item is resolution 2021-21, the harvest hoot nanny. Yep, uh, Adam Wason, Public Works Director. Uh, so this is a um, special event in conjunction with Switchyard Brewing Company and the uh, Fall Hoot Nanny Music Festival. They've done this a few times in the past on 9th Street. Uh, this would be on um, Saturday, October 9th, and wrapping up uh, just after midnight there on the 20 or on the 10th. Um, it's a, this involves a noise permit and they've done a good job notifying and working with city staff. We picked a non-football weekend, uh, considering the Hoosiers are gonna go undefeated this year and it's gonna be busy downtown. Um, and so been working closely with uh, Curtis and his team um, for this, has staff uh, support with both economic sustainable development and mayor's office. Um, taking this past public safety and all other folks as well. So. Uh, seeking your approval. Thank you. Any questions from the board on this item? Hang on. Um, um, go ahead. 
Yeah, I, I, I just like to speak out in favor of the Hoot Nanny. Um, Curtis, uh, I'm, I'm in from Bloomington Playwrights Project, Brad Cheeser, I'm the managing director. Um, we're part of their, um, you know, part of the plan. We usually open up our restrooms to them. Um, we're one of the uh, philanthropic people that, um, you know, part of the proceeds go to a couple of nonprofits that are around us. Uh, so I just like to speak out in favor of it, um, and uh, they've they've done a great job in the past with the other two block parties that they've had, uh, and I don't see this being any different. Um, they're very respectful, get done on the correct time, and it it you know they tell everybody well ahead. Thank you. Um, any questions from board members? <clears throat> any public comment on this item <clears throat> again if you'd like to offer public comment uh, you can raise your hand or use the chat function i don't see anything right now dan all righty do we have a motion i move that we approve resolution 2021-21 harvest hootenanny on october the 9th and I second. And I'll call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard. Yes. Beth Hollingsworth. Yes. Dana Hankey, yes. Motion passes. Next up under special events is resolution 2021 41, Paint the Town Purple. All right. Again, Adam Wason, Public Works. This is a uh, event in conjunction with the Indiana Center for Recovery and uh, Monroe County and amongst other governmental agencies. Uh, and, and it's a third annual event for Friday, September 3rd, 2021. They'll use the parking spaces on the north side of Kirkwood and the south side of the courthouse square there. So just the parking spaces there have some booths and uh, food trucks and they've notified as they were asked um, and full support from city staff. Awesome, any questions or comments from the board? Any public comment on this item? I don't see anything. Do we have a motion? I move that we approve resolution 2021-41, paint the town purple on uh, September 3rd. Nice second. And I'll call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard. Yes. Beth Hollingsworth. Yes. Dana Hankey's yes, motion passes. Next up is resolution 2021-42 for the Lotus World Music and Arts Festival. Adam Wason again, uh, Public Works. Uh, so this is a request for street closures, street closures, parking spaces, and a noise waiver for the 28th annual Lotus World Music and Arts Festival for Thursday, September 23rd through Sunday, September 25th, 2021. Uh, this is a signature event in downtown Bloomington each fall um, and first time back in person, you know, getting back in person this year. So um, they'll have uh, performances from artists across the globe serving a multi-generational audi audience up to uh, several thousand people. Um, and uh, this year with uh, an addition is that they're adding um, some events at Switchyard Park uh, during the day. Um, so they've been working closely with the Parks and Recreation Department amongst, uh, to, to get those reservations in place. And um, overall, they've uh, supplied their maps on the road closures, their traffic management plan, their waste management plan. Um, they did mail out um, notifications to adjoining property owners um, to the festival grounds. Just a brief rundown for the Lotus Fest uh, perimeter in the downtown, they will be using um, 4th Street between College and Walnut and 6th Street between College and Walnut for their main tents as they have in years past. Um, they'll be using the half a block there between Kirkwood or on Kirkwood between Walnut and Washington. If you can think between the uh, across from the bus Kirk and the CVS. Um, uh, so um, they'll be there on Kirkwood as well. They work closely with the restaurants to allow the restaurants to have their outdoor seating still. 
Um, they'll also have the section of Kirkwood between Lincoln and Washington there in front of the graduate and um, the church, First Christian Church, uh, for their food truck village. Um, they are, uh, like I said, using Switchyard Park for uh, some of their daytime events on the weekend. Um, but those are all uh, happen. Those approvals happen through the Board of Parks Commissioners. Um, overall, does receive city support. Uh, one conversation that's come up this year, I do want to bring uh, the board um, up to speed on, um, is uh, <clears throat> we have um, uh, talked with Lotus. We did get a concern, um, a remonstrance from a downtown resident on this. Um, item. Uh, we forwarded that to the board. We talked about that during the work session yesterday with the board. Um, a downtown resident just requesting an earlier cutoff than midnight, um, you know, made some reasonable arguments um, that um, were very well detailed. Um, you know, city staff, myself, others in economic sustainable development, um, had many conversations with Tamara Lowenthal and her team at Lotus, as well as the mayor's office. Um, you know, at this time, asking Lotus to make any changes uh, before midnight would, would be a big disruption to the, their festival planning. So we're, we're fully in support of a midnight cutoff. Uh, Tamara has talked about how it'll be a cu hard cutoff at midnight, you know, no encores going later. Um, so we had a good conversation about that. And uh, so staff's going to be supportive and we've updated the resolution to say a midnight cutoff each night. Um, that's the only change that you'll see in the resolution from uh, the first packet that went out and uh, we're confident that you know um, although it goes till midnight it's uh, for the overall community benefit and something that uh, the city supports so um, I believe it's the 21st annual did I see that right in the packet let me get back to the packet 28th uh, I think 28 oh wow uh, yeah so um, lots of years of Lotus being a great community partner downtown and uh want to say thanks to Jill Campbell and her team and all the folks tomorrow um, working closely with us. You know, all things that we've talked about with the big special events right now is, you know, um, we're hopeful and we're going to keep these going and uh, looking forward to it, doing it safely in the environment. And, uh, um, you know, we'll obviously closely be watching local health uh, department orders and things like that, working closely with the, the city leadership team and others. So. Uh, with that, um, I know we have some Lotus reps on the meeting this evening, but um, uh, do have support. We've worked closely with uh, police, fire, others, and obviously Lotus always works with uh, their contacts with Homeland Security on all their big tents, things like that. Um, uh, so happy to offer any questions. I'm not sure. Um, I'm sure the Lotus folks could answer questions too if you do have those. Thanks, Adam. Um, do we have any questions from the board? I had a question um, for the scheduling on Thursday. Are the are most of the performances indoors on Thursday with the outdoor performances on Friday and Saturday, or are they both outdoor and indoor on Thursday? So I'll speak to that. Um, hi, I'm Tamara Lowenthal, Executive Director for Lotus. The Thursday opening concert is at the BCT, and then there is going to be a Lotus in the Meadow concert at 9:30 p.m. that night, but it's in Dun Meadow, so. Those are the only two uh, areas that will be used on Thursday night. OK, thanks. Thanks. Any other questions from board members? I just want to know how many um, uh, music events do they plan or groups do they plan to have come in this year? We have right now 20 artists scheduled. One of them is virtual. And it may be that a second one is virtual as well. But we have 20 artists scheduled throughout performances. We are down two venues this year so we're slightly smaller and we will be selling less tickets uh, because we have to provide safety for indoor venues and all indoor venues will be require masks as Monroe County Health Guidelines. The tickets go on sale before the events or just yes they're they're on sale now at the Buskirk Chumley. Chumley. Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to add a the comment that uh, you know I appreciated the the discussion that's been happening between um, city staff and event organizers on ensuring that the, the cutoff time is 
you know, at midnight, as um, Adam mentioned, we don't have very many events that the board approves um, past the 10 p.m. cutoff. Um, you know, the ones I can think of right off the top of my head are Lotus, uh, downtown um, Taste of Bloomington, that's downtown Bloomington, and uh, Pride, uh, Pride Fest. Um, but otherwise, uh, you know, to, to do a, a longer cutoff is very rare. And I think that that's something the board is very mindful of, is that we have very limited um, festivals and as Adam mentioned, those you know signature festivals um, are the ones that uh, you know we've authorized for that. But otherwise, really appreciate um, the residents' concerns um, that were raised, and it, it's it is definitely something for us to be mindful of and, and mindful of going forward. I have a comment. I just have been thinking about this Delta variant, and we don't know where that's going as far as as numbers. And I just wonder if there's any possibility that this would have to all, well, all special events would go virtual. I don't know if that's a possibility or that this is pretty much not going to happen. Do you know, Adam? Yeah, let me jump in here. Um, so uh, again, Adam Weiss, Public Works Director. Um, you know, Beth, what we're following right now is just the latest guidelines coming out of the Health Department, the CDC, et cetera. Um, you know, there were, a lot of folks are moving, we're seeing, um, you know, special events move forward. We're seeing them, um, you know, hopefully being done safely. Um, you know, these will be some of our first ones in downtown in, of any large scale. You know, we've got Pride coming up at the end of the month. Um, you know, they're, they're doing a lot to space their tents and try to keep people spaced. And, the, you know, um, we're going to have signage downtown that even for, you know, right now the signage is going to say mask up indoors, but when we've got those festivals, it's just going to say mask up, um, you know, because if you can't, you know, I've been to, I've been at Pride Festival and I've been at Lotus over the years and, you know, uh, and when it's crowded, uh, heck, it's crowded right now on the streets downtown and you can't often be six feet away from folks. So, you know, we're just going to recommend folks follow the best advice of, the CDC, and that's to mask up when you're within six feet of another human um, right now. So, um, I, so that's kind of the approach we're taking. You know, we're seeing IU football move forward with what they're planning. Um, you know, so uh, the eternal optimist in me is just hopeful. Um, so, yeah, and I know Lotus is taking this very seriously, but yeah, tomorrow, if you want to add anything. I was just going to say that we are planning a live stream right now. We're actually going to be taping from the far center. And we at least have the technology to maybe expand a little bit. We've hired a, a sound company to do that for us. So it's part of the whole package of the weekend to do a live stream. I know this takes a lot of work. Thank you very much. It's exciting and everybody's looking forward to getting downtown for a lot of special events this year. Thanks, Beth. Any other uh, public comment on this item? Uh, all right, I don't see anything. Yep, Curtis, you're good. Um, uh, no, no public comment. I don't see anything, no hands okay. raised. Do you have a motion? I move that we approve resolution 2021-42, the Lotus Fest. Nice second. And I'll call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard? Yes. Beth Hollingsworth? Yes. Dana Hankey is yes. Motion passes. Next up, we have the consent agenda. On the consent agenda tonight is the approval of minutes for August 3rd, 2021. Resolution 2021-43, renewal of mobile vendor and the public right of way for La Poblana. Resolution 2021-44, renewal of mobile vendor in the public right of way, Top Shot of Jerk Chicken. Noise permit for B-Town Jazz Fest. Noise permit for Secretly Group's Paved Paradise. The addendum to Corson Service Agreement to include 4th Street Garage. The addendum to Evens Time Parks Equipment Maintenance Service Agreement to include the Trades District Garage. The addendum to the Evens Time Parker Services Agreement to include the Trades District Garage, the service agreement with Precision Concrete Inc., and the approval of payroll. Was there anything that needed to be removed from the agenda tonight or any board comment or questions on the agenda? Any public comment on the consent agenda tonight?
Don't see, any. Don't see anything. Alrighty. Do we have a motion? I move that we approve the consent agenda. I second. And I'll call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard. Yes. Beth Hollingsworth. Yes. Dana Hankey. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. New business. The first up is the contract with Ecologic LLC for the landscaping work at 17th and Arlington, Allen Street, and Bloomfield Road. Good evening, everyone. This is Russell White with the City of Bloomington Engineering Department. This landscaping work supports three different previously previous infrastructure projects and will include planting 40 uh, one and a quarter caliber deciduous trees on 17th Street and Monroe near the new round, newer roundabout. We will plant two two inch caliber oak trees on West Bloomfield Road. And there will also be 70 pl uh, plantings and one two inch caliber, caliber river birch tree in bump out rain gardens recently constructed on West Bloomfield Road. Staff received two quotes for this project, one from Ecologic LLC at $24,916 and one from Nature's Way incorporated at $32,606 and we request award of the contract for this project to Ecologic LLC for $24,916 as the lowest responsive and responsible quota. Great, thank you. Any questions from the board? Any public comment on this item? Nope. Okay, I don't see any. Uh, do we have a motion? I move that we approve the contract with Ecologic, Ecologic LLC for landscaping work for 17th and Arlington, Allen Street and Bloomfield Road in the amount of $24,916. I second. And I'll call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard. Yes. Beth Hollingsworth. Yes. Dana Hankey is yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. Next up is the request for lane, street, and sidewalk closures on North Walnut Street for the standard redevelopment project. Hi, Mike Stewart here with the City of Bloomington Engineering Department. Uh, landmark construction will be, or is requesting use of our right away for a redevelopment project on 14th Street, uh, currently where Brownstone Terrace is located. Uh, to start this off, they will need to do uh, water and sanitary work that will require a, for phase one, will require a lane closure on North Walnut. This will take place from approximately September 9th through September 22nd. Uh, this will bring North Walnut down to one lane and the uh, sidewalk intersection will be closed there and pedestrians will be rerouted down East 14th Street, uh, kind of mid block there, they will be adding a temporary crosswalk uh, at Washington so they can cross and detour without having to go and cross Walnut. Phase two will take place from September 23rd through October 6th. This will uh, have a westbound closure of East 14th from North Walnut to North Washington. Uh, and phase four is October 7th through November 25th. And this will be a full closure on East 14th from North Washington to North Dunn. And the sidewalk along the south side of East 14th will be closed. Uh, this phase is contingent upon the completion of a North Dunn sidewalk extension. Uh, basically, right now, the sidewalk on the eastern side of North Dunn stops at the substation, and uh, they, they will be installing a new sidewalk and installing crosswalks and detectable elements there, so pedestrians will be able to, uh, basically, they'll be able to still go up North Dunn and still be able to get to East 14th. Um, with all of this, we have worked with uh, Landmark Construction to 
verify that they will have all MUTCD compliant signs, crosswalks, barricades in place prior to any excavations. We have worked with them, letting them know that this is a hot area where people may steal or move signs and that they will be responsive to any missing signs or any moved signs. So we will have uh, compliance ongoing through all of this. Bloomington Transit has been notified and they will be detouring uh, their routes up to East 15th and property owners have been notified. Uh, and I believe we also have a couple representatives, uh, Kendall and Eric from Landmark Properties or Landmark Construction. And I am also happy to take any questions from the board. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Yeah, Adam, um, is it reasonable to ask them since we would be approving three phases of this uh, large project, reasonable to ask them to come back before each phase begins just to update us on on the um, the project and how it's going? Is that Possibly. Yeah, absolutely, Beth. You know, um, so uh, again, Adam Wason, Public Works Director. Um, yeah, I would say, you know, this is a large project. Mike and uh, the team over in engineering are going to be fully in tune with uh, the project and um, can be, you know, seeking updates and getting updates, offering those to the board. Um, you know, a general comment I'm going to offer is, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of hopeful that the uh, petitioners were on the call for the first comment we uh, had for public comment tonight um, to say that, you know, um, when when we do have, you know, pedestrian um, access restricted to sidewalks and things and closures, we've got to make sure we're being really on top of it with um, um, following what's approved, you know, if a walk around is required, that walk around needs to be open and unobstructed, all those things, you know, Greg made some great points tonight, um, as he often does, as he, as he does with these things, he, you know, um, he, we have to look at it from the eyes of a pedestrian, and honestly, we have to look at it from the eyes of somebody that's mobility impaired, um, um, you know, if someone's in a, mo in, in, who's mobility impaired is going to be in this area, how is it going to be safe for them? And, and these are major construction projects. So, um, you know, it, it's important. Um, so I, you know, that's just an extra comment there from me. Um, and I know we've been working really closely with Kendall, um, and, and his team, uh, and their team and, you know, and the developers. And I appreciate that. Um, Mike's been hard at this. So, yeah. I have a, a question. It's um, actually, I have two questions or clarifications. Um, one is on the um, Walnut Street lane restriction. Are there only two lanes um, there of Walnut or are there three? I was thinking there were three right there, but maybe I'm miscalculating. Mm. Uh, there are two, there are parking, there, there is parking on the uh, western side. Currently there's a temporary bump out there that we have. Uh, so it will be constricting it down to one lane of travel uh, in that section and it should be wide enough for a full travel lane. Okay, so it'll basically be restricting one travel lane and parking along that stretch. Correct, and uh, obviously again, we'll be, or they'll be blocking the crosswalk there on uh, 14th. Okay, and then the other question I had um, was about the maintenance of traffic, uh, specifically the pedestrian and sidewalk access. I, I know you're routing pedestrians to the opposite side of 14th Street. Is there any spot where there is a walk around or is it strictly that detour of the sidewalk to the other side? Yeah, it is. Uh, in this case, it is the detour. There wouldn't have been room for a walk around since they'll be, if you look at where their excavation will be, it will be going into Walnut. So there wouldn't be space for a walk around. And there was discussion on having them cross Walnut, but uh, being so close to a construction zone there, it, there just wouldn't be any safe passage. So while this does add in some distance to, a, you know, for a pedestrian detour, it will be far enough away from the construction zone that a pedestrian should be able to cross safely and see oncoming traffic. I have a question for Adam. Um, 
it, do we issue fines if the maintenance of traffic plan is not followed? For example, if sidewalks aren't cleared or if the signs aren't there? Or yeah, so, you know, what we try to do is, is you know, whenever we notice things, it's going to be, you know, conversations first and, hey, you know, uh, the inspectors went out there and when Mike and his team and Paul and um, they're out there and they see things, we're going to first point it out, you know, um, if there's rep yeah, repeated violations of um, the MOT or of the maintenance of traffic plan or, you know, having unsafe conditions that are, are documented, yeah, you know, um, do we try to avoid fines? Of course. Um, but in, you know, instances where it's necessary, um, we've resorted to that. That's, that's a, something we have done and we've done it several times this year when, you know, blatant things have been pointed out um, that, that, you know, are in violation. So, um, you know, we always try to work together and, you know, communicate as best we can. Um, uh, but, you know, if last case, we would uh, resort to fines, yes. Okay, yeah. I mean, if, oh, go ahead, Mike, sorry. Uh, if I can just add, uh, we have relayed that to Landmark Construction that uh, basically that is why we are requesting that all signs be accounted for prior to any cut so they don't get in there and cut and say, whoops, we forgot to order the barricades, for example. Uh, and same with, we do know that sometimes signs do go come up stolen or get moved. They need to be responsive to that and not let something sit for the weekend or you know, even sit for a full day. They need to be replaced and moved straight away. And that's something we will be monitoring. Uh, so, yep. All right, thank you. Now, Mike, I'll just point out, I've never known a college student to have a couple extra beverages in that neighborhood and try to steal a street sign every week of the year. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. All righty. Any other questions from yeah. the board? Yes. I want to ask Mike, is it pretty much on schedule? Do you think that they're ready to start the project uh, on August 21st? Yeah. They, so they can go forward with this. Uh, or September 9th. Uh, yeah, they've been they've been pushing us to try to get. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm looking at now the staff report that August 21st was from when Paul brought this a couple weeks ago uh, to the work session. Uh, they'll be starting on September 9th, and they uh, have been really pushing to kind of get us on that date. So I do think that will happen. Uh, and if I can add just one more quick thing, I do want to say that with a project of this scale, the MOT does need to be a little bit dynamic. So if we do get out there and we see that something isn't working, uh, you know, pedestrians walking into the work zone, traffic getting confused with the detour, et cetera, uh, we have let them know that we do continue to reserve the right to request changes to the MOT as necessary. Thank you. Thanks. Any public comment on this item? And if you could just state your name and who you're with, I think we have one thumbs up. Yes, my name is John Richards. I'm an attorney at Bunger and Robertson. I'm sitting in for Bill Beggs this evening. Our offer represents Telco Inc., which has two parcels of real estate, which are immediately east of, or excuse me, west of the develop, redevelopment parcel in question. The first is at 940 North Walnut, which is at the southeast corner of North Walnut and Fort, 14th Street. That houses Elkins Apartments, some of their apartments, and also the leasing office for Elkins Apartments. Immediately to the east of that at 108 East 14th Street is the uh, telco property that houses Academic e Edge Inc., which is a business that's operated out of that um, parcel. The, the concern that, that telco has would be car access via 14th Street to the two properties in question, since there is a significant business base for Elkins to the east, a few blocks away in the area of the 15th and Dunn Street neighborhood. Elkins needs 
uh, clients, tenants to be able to get access to their office via 14th Street, especially during this important time of year. There has been some discussion with our office, which I think Adam is aware of, um, with the contractor about specific requests to access to the properties that have been identified, three of which I think are not at issue. Uh, one we are waiting on a, on a response on, and then one is at issue. And I don't know if there are any representatives from the contractor here this evening tonight or not, but I can talk about what has been asked and, and um, you know, what's, wh what the reply has been so far. Um, number one, the first request from Telco was that at no time will motor vehicle motor vehicle access or pedestrian access to 940 North Walnut, which is at 14th and Walnut, and from 108 East 14th, which is the property immediately to the east from the north side, be, it, be obstructed for any amount of time. And I understand there's an agreement with respect to that. Secondly, that at all times, sidewalk, sidewalk access to of 940 and 108 will remain open and unobstructed regardless of whether which side of the street that's on north or south 14th street that is third that any closure to 14th street and access to 940 and 108 east 14th would be the subject of a separate petition which is i believe scheduled for some time next year and my understanding that there is an agreement with respect to all three of those. There was a uh, question about whether there would be utility interruption to 940 and 108 East 14th Street. There's been no response to that yet, as far as I know. And then the, the biggest issue, which there's no agreement on, is whether um, both properties will be accessible to motor vehicles and pedestrians uh, on each on the north side via either Washington or 14th, excuse me, via either, either Washington or Lincoln Street. So those are the concerns that Telco has. I can I can get into some possible alternatives uh, if that would be helpful, but but that's. Uh, those are the concerns at this point. Thank you. Um, um, Adam, are you aware of those concerns? Or This is the first I've heard of this. So um, Mr. Richards, I'm not sure if you've mistaken me for someone else. I was just looking through my emails. I don't have any correspondence um, for Elkins property or 940 North Walnut in my emails. Um, Mike, I'm gonna defer to you. Is this something you and your team have been talking with Andrew about or are you aware of this? Uh, Paul had emailed me this morning, so Paul is aware, and he's been working with Jackie Moore, uh, okay. and prior to that, Chris Wheeler, Got it. to address these concerns, and I know I have an email chain here saying that Eric has, Eric Schultz has replied to these concerns, including, uh, I think it was number four, which is the utilities shut down, but I can defer to Eric on that. Okay, before we defer to Eric, uh, Jackie, can you jump on here? Uh, Jackie Moore with City Legal. Yes, I spoke with Paul this afternoon and he was running through these five items with me. He said as far as that number two, which is, um, no, I'm sorry, number four, the utility interruption, and he did say there was going to have to be um, a brief, he said, one day interruption because they have to install a new water main. He said they plan to do it during the night and there will be telephone, you know, people will have access and they'll be informed well before that so that they can plan accordingly. But there will be a very brief shutdown for that water line to get laid. Okay. Um, so again, this is the first I was aware that um, we there's ongoing negotiations. So, um, at this point, um, 
Yeah, uh, Jackie, should we defer to Mr. Schulte to respond to the concerns or do you want to do that one by one, Jackie? Uh, well, my notes are very brief. If somebody with a contractor I mean, could probably do a better job and I've got my little notes in case um, there's something else that I can add. Yeah, I can chime in. I'm with Landmark Construction, Landmark Properties. Um, the item number four, um, utility shutdown. I did respond back to Bill this morning. I tried to call him yesterday evening and respond back to him this morning. Um, we will have to shut down the water service. I mean, it probably be a maximum of two hours, um, you know, to tie in your existing water service. Once we put the new main down 14th street, um, like I said, we threw it out there. We could do it at night. You know, we'll work with you, um, to not, you know, to create the least amount of disruption for you guys. So, um, like I said, it'd probably be two hours at the most. Um, um, but yeah, we can kind of work through that as the time gets closer. It'd probably be sometime in early, late September, early October when that happens. Um, so, you know, obviously leading up to that, we'll work with those properties um, to make sure, you know, everything's squared away. But, but yeah, we will have to do some sort of utility shutdown to tie in your water line as we put the new water main down through 14th Street. And then I think the only other issue, Bill, um, and I had discussed and Paul, that was kind of the one hang up was the traffic coming west on 14th Street um, towards Walnut. Um, we will have that north lane shut down because um, that's basically where the water line runs through um, between kind of Walnut Street and I'll say halfway to Washington Street. Um, something that create access heading west down 14th Street to get to get in that property. Um, will be difficult because um, the northbound lane will be shut down. Um, I mean, we can work with you. Maybe we can split it up in half um, to try to create as little disruption as possible. But, you know, it's probably about, a, you know, between the Walnut Street tie-in um, and then going down Walnut to about halfway, like it's about halfway to Washington Street, we're probably looking at three to four weeks worth of work. Um, and then after that, it will be open, basically. Well, 14th Street will be shut down after that. But, um, you know, to create, to keep westbound traffic, you know, it's going to be kind of difficult with the northbound lane being trenched open. So, is there access to the property off of Walnut, or is it just 14th that has access to the 940 and 108 properties? Looks like 108 is only accessed off of 14th, unless does uh, I defer to Mr. Richards? I see Mr. Beggs on here as well. Um, I'm not sure if the 940 property on the southern end connects. I can't get to satellite view right now. Um, or not. I, believe, I don't believe it does answer your question. Okay. So Mr. Richards, do you know does those does that part do those parking lots connect from 940 North Walnut to 108 East 14th at all on the southern end of 940? And I'm gonna I'm gonna let Bill defer to that. I don't know. And before he does that, my my comment about you being aware of this was based upon what Bill told me about you and he having a brief conversation about somebody from your office responding to him and apparently yep. that didn't happen. So no, I, no, no, I, here, I'll I clarify. Bill asked me, Bill called the main public works line yesterday when I was uh, helping answer phones and he asked for Paul to get in touch with him. We didn't talk about what it was about. I, we exchanged pleasantries, but uh, I didn't get it. We didn't get into what it was about. So that's why I wasn't aware. Um, but it does look like, so it does, yeah, but if Bill would like to reply, it does look like I'm looking from Walnut Street that the properties connect 940 and 108 uh, via the parking lots. But yeah, Mr. Beggs, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm in the middle of something else and I just jumped on this real oh. quickly to see where it was. So I'm, oh. I'm behind. But um, the, the, the issue that as I, <clears throat> when I last heard from, somebody and I, I it could be that I got an email today from Mr. Schulte but when I last um, heard what there would be uh, the hang-up was traffic going westbound on 14th Street and our request was that that be accommodated we see that all the time it happens in in road construction projects all over the place and so our request was simply that that be phased that it that if um, if necessary, that a flagger be, uh, flaggers be uh, placed there, um, and so that's our that's our request for an accommodation on 14th Street traffic from the east. 
Is that a one way? Is 14th a one way at that location? No, it's two way. So two, traffic two can travel from the west eastbound. It's just that east and westbound lane is closed. It, yeah, yeah, it can presently, but when they close that lane, then there will be no way to get from our, from the east to um, our client's property on 14th. Without detouring around and coming eastbound. To 12th or, yeah. Okay. So going down probably to 10th. Yeah, okay. 10th or 12th maybe would be the detour. Um, or you'd have to go north to 15th and back over to College Southbound, back to Walnut. Yeah, that would be a pretty circuitous one. But um, and, and, that's a, and that's a problem for us from an operations standpoint because we, we have um, significant presence to, a few blocks east, and whether it's whether it's tenants, whether it's uh, work people take responding to various calls and various problems, um, and so we've got we've got a need there is the reason for coming forward. Um, of course, yeah. It, Mike, can you talk about, um, did, did we discuss the idea? Can you talk about what was discussed here with the contractor, Eric? You, you know, jump in as well. Yeah, I'm going to defer to Eric on this. Uh, it had been Paul who was in conversations with Eric and Kendall. Yeah, so I mean, and Kendall jump in too. I know you've been pretty involved, but yeah, so typically what we've just been discussing is just kind of like a hard, you know, barrier, um, road closure right there. I mean, just on that North Brown Lane, just for, and that's, you know, for said, three, that's for three weeks of the project to do the water yeah, line alone. Correct. Yeah. And then starting like, you know, the third or fourth week, we'll be shutting down basically 14th Street from Washington all the way to Dunn Street completely. But that's, so, that's all east of their properties. That is, you're correct, yes. Right. So basically the only, the northbound lane on the front of their property, well, I mean, both lanes, both, both entrances will stay open um, through this phase of construction. Um, both their, I think, I, I don't know the addresses on top of my head, but both those lanes that they've discussed will stay open. Both the entrance exits will stay open. It just, all traffic will have to go west to east. And your reason for the hard closure is because you don't want to do three weeks of flagging? Yeah, I mean, basically, yeah, I mean, that's just kind of what we've discussed. Yeah, I mean, it's... There's enough room in the street to do it with flagging. I would assume so. I don't know at the top of my head, to be honest with you. I don't know the widths. I would imagine, um, I don't know, Kendall, have you looked into that at all? If you can speak to that, but... Yeah, this is Kendall with Smith Design Group. Um, you could flag it. I think you'd have to cover the construction zone with plates after hours. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we obviously have big probably trip. don't want to flag it 24 hours a day. Right. But that's definitely possible. That's for the three week duration of the water line portion. That right. was, and they would, and those properties would have access from Walnut eastbound for that three weeks. That is correct. Interesting. Okay. Um, Mike, what, you know, what's the engineering department? What's their take on, what's your take been on these conversations over the last few days? Uh, my take on that, well, this is the first that flagging has been discussed. I absolutely would be, I think we will support that 100% having flagging there and plating at night. Uh, that's specific. okay. Um, yeah. When is that work? Is that uh, so for the construction team and the developer? Is that when's that work scheduled? I don't have the timeline right in front of me. When, is that the first work you're trying to do right now? Is this something we've got a few weeks where we can work on? Some um, alternatives. Where, so where is that at in the scope? It'll be included in both our phase one and phase two portions of the work, which starting September 9th through basically the first week of October. So got it. So it's the first phase one and two of our MOT plan. So I guess Mr. Richards, Mr. Beggs, you know, there's no, a, would, would it be acceptable for the three weeks just not to have that westbound there for that one block or? Well, that's just a, that's a, that is, they couldn't. Uh, actually, yeah. I take that back. Sorry, excuse me, but I'm sorry to interrupt. But yeah, so phase one, they should be able to come east down to west and turn, it would just be the phase two portion of the work. Um, phase one, when we're just doing the tie-in tie at Walnut Street, will be shut down basically just 
west of their west entrance. So they should be able to come down 14th Street and pull into um, their property on both sides. It would just be the phase two. So it'd be about a two week portion of the work that goes from roughly Walnut Street to, like I said, about halfway to Washington Street. So. Yeah, and, and our when we say flag, I mean, our request is just that either Washington to 14th or Lincoln to 14th be available. I, I would think that it might have to be both at different times, you know, one or the other at different times. But that's our that's the reason uh, or I, I think that's an accommodation. We're, I'm trying to find accommodations uh, to make it easier just so that we can always get traffic from the east to our property going west on 14th. Um, and whether that's staging, whether that's doing it, you know, partial um, work in phases or stages uh, with flagging, that'd be our request. Yeah, I mean, we could, I'm just looking at this chair, I mean, we could, you know, do the western portion of that work, which you, you would still have entrance into your eastern entrance. And then there'd probably be like a week where it'd be completely shut down, not be able to go west. Uh, um, but we can stagger that a little bit. Um, so even if it's flagging during business hours, that, that would be, I, I assume that would work, wouldn't it still? Or be, I assume be acceptable to engineering too. Yeah, I, th I, I think the flagging is acceptable. It's whether or not that's agreeable for all parties. We don't often negotiate on the fly <laughs> uh, during Board of Public Works meetings on, on some of these things. Usually we well, have and I have I, <laughs> Yeah. I appreciate that. And I'm sorry. I tried to, we, we yeah. tried to make this happen before and just couldn't connect, but um, which might be another middle ground here is that if you want to put us on your next agenda and um, try to work this through at least that phase for your next meeting on uh, 31st, 31st. Right. I, I do want to be uh, sensitive. I know we've we pushed from the August 3rd meeting. Uh, I know these folks are trying to get things moving. Um, if we it does phase, so there's no issue with anything phase one right now. And that gets you started on September 9th. Correct, Eric? Correct. I mean, if we would flag, I guess here's my question. If, if we have at least one entrance open, do we need flagging? I mean, if we, I get it, if we shut both of them down, if you can't get to either one of them, you know, we can work on flying because that maybe just be about a week worth of work or so. Um, but if we can keep at least one entrance into your property, because I think the entrance makes kind of like a horseshoe type shape where you can kind of get to both. Um, we could do flagging if both, but if both entrances are shut down coming from west, east to west. Say that last part again, please. So if both of your entrances are shut down going from east to west, um, we will use flagging if we can at least keep one of them open, which would basically just be your eastbound one. If that could stay open, you know, if we would phase that to keep that open and then, you know, the last minute, you know, for a week's worth of work, we'll have to do flagging to make sure you can come in from east to west. That, makes sense. that might be, I mean, I appreciate the effort and that might be another reason if we could put the, I get the sensitivity to delay in the August 3rd to tonight. I understand. Uh, but that, working that out might be a reason if we could to put this portion of the MOT out on the August 31st hearing so we can try to work that out. I, I think that has a, what Eric just said has a possibility of, of working for us. Eric, does that, does that throw your timeline off from what you guys are? No, I mean, if, if we can move forward with phase one, I mean, that, like I said, that's starting yeah. September 9th to the 22nd. Yeah. Um, I mean, if we can get, I mean, just for sake of time, if we can get, I think, we're pretty much in agreement on phase one and phase four. I think we're good. So if we can get those approved, at least we don't have to talk about those the next time. But if we could, I can work, we can work on Kendall and I can look at phase two. We can figure something out there. Uh, and I'll get with Bill and we'll discuss and we'll come up to some sort of agreement. So I would feel more comfortable if they bring it back the 31st. Really uh, approve phase one only. Okay. That's what I feel. I don't know, Dana. Oh, Kyla. Adam, I, I would, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, it sounds like we're all in agreement. Eric says that phase two being delayed until the 31st is no problem. Um, knowing that phases three and four come after phase two, I think it, you know, 
are there and and those phases are well into the future so i don't think i don't see any harm in approving phase one getting getting everybody on for that september 9th uh conversations can continue between eric and his team and bill and and their team on, on those access issues for phase two and it sounds like everything phase one and four is already agreed to so that shouldn't have any issue getting approved or phase wait sorry i just screwed up my phases. phase phase one yeah yes <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, yes, I think we approve phase one tonight, um, get them moving, and then on the 31st, plan to approve phase two, three, and four, knowing phases three and four don't seem to have any um, conflicts amongst the property owners. Just for the record, phase three will be probably next year. That's kind of way down the road. We want to inform. Just perfect. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate Thanks. that. Eric, thank you. Kendall, thank you. thank you. John, Bill. All right. So I think we'll, Mike, are you good with what we're, you're hearing here as far as approving phase one? We'll get these other parts figured out. Absolutely. All right. Perfect. So the motion from the board would be to approve phase one of whatever the rest of the resolution was. All righty. So do we have a motion from the board? I move that we approve phase one of the request for Lane Street and sidewalk closures on North Walnut and 14th Street for the standard redevelopment project from Landmark. And I second. And I'll call for a vote. Hey, Dana, can you just real quick ask if there's any other public comment? I think when we oh. initially asked, it was just Mr. Richards. I don't know if there was any, but there, we have enough folks on the meeting. I just want to make sure there's no other public comment on this topic. Okay, thank you. Yeah, is there any public comment on this item? Okay, I don't see any there, so we should be good. I think Kyla made the, or no, Beth made the motion, Kyla seconded. So Dana. Yep. Thank you, and I'll call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard? Yes. Beth Hollingsworth? Yes. And Dana Hankey's yes, motion passes. Okay, next up is the contract with Fast Signs for the 2021 Fourth Street Garage Wayfinding Sign Project. Good evening, Ryan Daly, Public Works, Parking Garages. Uh, the Fourth Street Garage is uh, scheduled to open on the 23rd of August, and we are preparing wayfinding signage for the interior of the facility, and it's going to match the current wayfinding signage uh, and all the other facilities that we have. Uh, staff requested three bids. I uh, received two from station 43, uh, two bids, one from station 43 um, and fast signs. And fast signs is the lowest bidder. We're recommending a approval to fast signs for this project. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions from board members? Do we have any public comment on this item? I don't see any. Thank you. Do you have a motion? I move that we approve contract with fast signs for the uh, 2021 Fourth Street Garage Wayfinding Sign Project for seven thousand eight hundred forty-seven dollars and twenty-four cents. Nice second. I'll call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard. Yes. Beth Hollingsworth. Yes. Dana Hankey. Yes. Motion passes. And last up is the contract with EMB Paving Inc. for the Lower Cascades Road Project. All right, Adam Wayson again, Public Works Director. Uh, so this is uh, Public Works and Street Division are requesting, uh, we got two bids for a Lower Cascades repaving project. Uh, you all are very familiar with the Lower Cascades conversation. Um, and so this is the uh, repaving and traffic calming project. Um, <clears throat> we've got our bids in and EMB paving was the low bidder at $160,550. Um, and we're requesting to award that bid this evening to EMB Paving. Thanks, Adam. Uh, how close was that to what we budgeted? Um, so there were some engineer estimates. It was pretty close. Um, 
it, maybe a little higher than engineer's estimates, but not um, nothing outrageous. Um, and that's for this is the paving, the traffic calming, um, and so uh, and it goes from about the IMI entrance all the way up to Clubhouse Drive. Um, so it's a pretty good project. Um, I will note, um, you know, we're hopeful to get that con that constructed and built out this season. Yet, um, with the flooding from June and the damage to the wall of the Cascades Creek there, where the road washed out a bit, uh, we've just gotten some word back from DNR that we can move forward with the project to stabilize that. Uh, so now we're trying to get that scheduled. So we're hopeful, but um, I. I, I know we won't be reopened by the first football game, so uh, we're trying to communicate that out. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions from the board? Yeah, I, I read through that pretty couple of times, and I couldn't find what the funding source is, Adam, for this project. Oh, sorry. This is um, Parks Bond funding. Okay, and then it's a... Um, escrow goes into escrow and it's uh the city and a contractor and the owner of the properties and decide how that's to be paid for the escrow yes yes okay okay thank you we figured we'd offer up to park since we do the paving around here that we'd help them out <clears throat> Okay. Any other questions from the board? Okay, any public comment on this item? I don't see any. All right. Do we have a motion? I move that we approve the contract with the NB Paving Inc. for the Lower Cascades Road Project or $160,550. I second. And I'll call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard. Yes. Beth Hollingsworth. Yes. Dana Hankey, yes. Motion passes. Next up is staff reports and other business. Uh, Adam Wason again, Public Works. Um, staff report for today is it's busy, busy, busy Bloomington. Um, we are, we uh, installed some, we worked with Cassidy Electric again this morning to install some more lights on Kirkwood across Kirkwood, uh, closer to Walnut Street there. So that was a nice project. Um, uh, every division of Public Works right now is just uh, kind of running full tilt sanitation. Um, you know, move in, move out period is always just so busy on them. Um, street departments paving, um, animal shelters, uh, pretty much almost max capacity right now. So if you need a furry friend to go on down to the animal shelter, um, you know, parking enforcement, parking division, services division, um, super, super busy with all the students returning, trying to get their permits online. Um, uh, you know, so just across the board, everybody's quite busy. We've been doing a lot of downtown cleanup efforts, been doing a lot of curbside kind of beautification efforts with our Centerstone partnership. That's been going really great. Um, you know, if anybody's got any ingenious solutions to get the weeds that grow between the curb and the sidewalk taken care of, I would love it. Uh, but that's also kind of a little plea to all the homeowners in Bloomington and all the business, you know, property owners. Um, a little bit of help with that goes a long way for curb appeal. It's something we're going to try to focus on over the next um, little bit, you know, just beautification throughout the community with different, um, you know, uh, uh, public relations events and things like that. So um, excited to try to get that off, uh, off the ground and running. So um, clear your weeds and your cracks of your sidewalks. That's our, that's the, that's the program we're going to go with. But now just very busy and just want to thank all the public work staff out there working their butts off. I mean, um, last week in those high temperatures, uh, you know, the street crews out there were on a milling job. And uh, um, I think the road temperature was somewhere around 112 degrees at that time. So, you know, just uh, prime season for us to be out there working hard and um, appreciate all their efforts. So thank you. Thanks, Adam. How is our like staffing level? Um, are we all staffed up? Are we... Honestly, the hardest thing, actually, here's a good one, plea for crossing guards, school crossing guards. If you have an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon, we could really use your help right now. Uh, a lot of folks don't realize that the city um, staffs all the crossing guards across the community. Um, and that's done through the parking services division. Um, 
Um, it's always, and I learned something new when we took on parking this year that we got school crossing guards too. Um, and so we're currently short, I think eight crossing guards. Um, and, um, you know, towards the end of last school year, we were down about four or five. Um, this year we're down, I think eight. So we're sending other city staff out um, to quite a few locations across the city to do school crossing guard duties. So um, if you go to bloomington.in.gov forward slash jobs, um, school crossing guards are listed there and we'll, um, uh, it's kind of open, um, open hiring there. Otherwise, um, you know, we're still getting quite a few applications in for each job that we have open. Um, you know, whether they're union positions, frontline positions, or even some of the more professional office type positions. Um, it's really been the crossing guards, um, you know, but otherwise, um, on the civil city side, non-public safety, I think we're, um, we're getting quite a few applications in. I know we had a sanitation position closed recently that had, um, uh, I think, 10 or 12 applicants. So that's, you know, a good pool. So overall, um, city is a great place to work, especially public works. Especially with a boss like you. <laughs> okay, any other questions or comments from the board on staff reports? I was just going to say, I um, think that it sounds like there could be a really uh, nice collaboration on figuring out like the best, like environmentally friendly way to remove those weeds from the the cracks. Um, I, I have a few things I've read about before, but maybe... Um, the uh, sustainable side of the city could come up with some tips because I'll admit I've been lackadaisical in that area. I'd be curious what they say works. Yeah, um, spraying Roundup is not what we do. Um, and so we, we've gotten away from that type of uh, treatment many, many, many years ago. Um, I, uh, the deputy mayor actually sent me a knee. Uh, it's an attachment to a bobcat like skid steer. Um, and it's a steaming mechanism. So it's got like a 300 gallon water jug on top of the front of the skid steer that creates steam. And then it takes about three days for it to actually die off. And then you have to come back and at least somebody got to at least pull it out. And, you know, then they grow back um, every year. So I, that wasn't my favorite one yet. Um, right now, we're, we're honestly with with our crews, we're in our main corridors where the best thing to do is scrape them with, a you know, like an actual scraper and get the roots out and really pull them. Um, you know, last I'll give you an example. Last year up on the bypass, we did all of the islands from Kinzer Pike down to Third Street. Um, um, that and and we've got the weeds and the cracks of the road and the cracks of the sidewalks and the cracks of the medians. And it took us about a day and a half with two street sweepers, a crew of about 14, you know, people doing traffic control. Um, and it's really labor intensive to do that type of cleanup. But after it was done, it looked really great. And then I drove by there again and they're back. Um, but it is, it's labor intensive, but we're, you know, we want to try to keep that the beautification efforts up. Uh, the interesting part is, you know, I mentioned the bypass. Um, NDOT does not do that type of cleanup effort. Um, they leave it to the local community. So that was one thing we learned last year um, when we went and did that. So, yeah. For residential, I use um, white vinegar and uh, blue dawn and salt. And that really works and keeps it away from the, out of the sidewalk yeah. cracks. That one sounds environmentally friendly. It is, but <laughs> tough for the city to do all that. So. <laughs> I actually did ask if we could use our brine machines in the summer to come up with something. Um, Joe was not real thrilled with the idea of using his brine machines for winter snow control for that um, in an experimental way, so. Okay, next up we have approval of claims. Any questions on claims tonight from the board? I do. Um, and it's not about the amount. I'm just wanting to know if Adam would consider not this meeting, but but a meeting coming up talking about the Recover Forward program and what that is involved with uh, Public Works and what how, what's been done. So we don't have to do that tonight. But there was just one uh, on there, like a clean energy uh, federal credit union received 105,000 for the Recover Forward um, grant. So 
Sure. Um, I know the mayor's office um, has an update they gave to the city council on all the recover forward stuff. So that's in a centralized document. We can definitely share that out. Yeah, I think that would be good. Report, you know, public works really worked on sidewalks and bus stops and more mobility um, uh, improvements. So that was, um, that, that's where we focused our project management. So I can definitely share the other information on all the other departments and what they were doing. Yeah, I just think it's, it's fascinating. So that's good. The other one was that I saw that um, the neighborhood greenway uh, projects have been started and uh, how many have been done and how do they decide what neighborhoods are going to be? So those are all through planning and transportation staff and the, oh, I can't think of it's the bicycle and pedestrian safety commissioner, which group they're working with. Um, and they, the, is that Allen Street and, Oh, Beth, what page was that? Just so I can make sure I'm talking about the right one. Do you remember? I don't. Okay. Uh, but yes, we can get you a Greenways update. I know they were, th those are um, projects, probably engineering overseeing that uh, P&T worked on to get off the ground, so. Yeah, it was number 7059 Eagle Bridge Engineering. Okay. Uh, that, that was under planning, yeah. I don't know the page number, but that was. Oh, so that would be some of the design work on one of the Greenways, but we can figure out exactly which one it was. Yeah, that's a, kind of an interesting thing for me since I think our neighborhood's on that first list. So, okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion on claims? I move that we approve claims two million six hundred forty-eight thousand two hundred fifty-five dollars and fifty-five cents. Uh, just one correction. It's uh, $2,648,244.55. Oh, okay. Thank you. And I second that amount. And I'll call for a vote. Kyla Cox Deckard? Yes. Beth Hollingsworth? Yes. Dana Hankey? Yes. Motion passes. And I call for adjournment. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank you.